rhombuses. Or is it rhombi? Hmm. Oh, hey there. It's Mrs. Rock. I was just making a list of my favorite shapes. Today, we're gonna be using some shapes to make a cool painting. We're gonna be making overlapping monochromatic shapes paintings. Can you say that five times fast? Overlapping monochromatic shape paintings. Overlapping monochromatic shape paintings. Overlapping monochromatic shape paintings. Overlapping monochromatic shape paintings. Overlapping monochromatic Ugh. No, I can't. Anyway, I'm really excited about this project. Here are the materials you're going to need. You need to be thinking about choosing two things. First, you need to choose what kind of shape you're going to use in your painting. The second thing you're gonna choose is what color you're going to use. You're gonna be using the same color and the same shape for your whole painting. When you choose just one color and one shape and you use it over and over again, it's called repetition. And when you use the same shapes and the same colors over and over again, you get unity within your painting. Unity means the whole composition goes together. It looks like one unified piece. For whatever shape you choose, you can draw them out freehand on your paper or you can use a ruler to make sure you have those straight edges like on these triangles. But since the shape that I'm choosing for my composition is circle, I went around my house and I found objects that were circular that I could trace. And I've chosen woohoo, purple. What I'm gonna do now is trace my objects that I've chosen, all these circles, and I'm going to make sure that they overlap. Overlapping means one on top of another. And I'm gonna keep going, drawing my overlapping shapes until I'm happy with my composition and it seems balanced. I could even have some of my circles coming off the edge of my page. There, I'm happy with the way that looks. I've got a variety of sizes of circles and they're overlapping and I'm ready to paint. I found my color, here it is, purple, or as artists call it, violet. And I need a water cup and a paintbrush. In order to make my really dark values, I need to use a lot of paint and just a little bit of water because the more water I use, the lighter the color is going to be. Monochromatic means one color. Mono means one and chromatic means color. So I'm only going to be using one color of paint to create all these different values of one color. I'm gonna start off with my deepest, darkest values. Value means the lightness or darkness of a color. So my paintbrush is wet and I'm going to just dance my paintbrush on the surface of my paint. I'm not digging into it. I'm just lightly sweeping the surface and then I can choose some spots for those really, really dark purple values. And what I do is I run my paintbrush along the edge so I make a little bit of a border, kind of a buffer zone with my paint. And that way I don't have to worry too much about getting outside the lines because then I just fill in the inside. So I'm going to kind of hop around my painting. I got a little bit more water on my brush sweeping a little bit more paint onto it. And I'm gonna hop around my painting and fill in some of these areas with my really dark, dark violet color. Remember, it's easier if I use the edge of my paintbrush and pull it along the edge to make those borders, those buffer zones. And notice I keep having to dip my paintbrush in my water. That happens. You're going to have to keep dipping it into your water in order to pick up more paint on your brush. And I'm not really like swishing it around in the water. I'm just doing a quick dip back in my paint. 
and then pull it along the edge. And you know what? I think I'm actually going to move my paint over here on this side so it's closer to my water cup. There we go, that'll be easier. Again, I'm making those buffer zones, those border areas, and then I can fill in the inside and not have to worry about getting outside the lines. Quick dip, quick sweep, make a border along the edge, quick dip, quick sweep. And then I can fill in those bigger areas with my dark violet color. And if it's starting to dry, it ends up looking a little lighter. So once that dries, I can actually put another layer of watercolor on top of it to make it look even darker. But I'm gonna wait for it to dry a little bit more because if my paper is too wet and I keep going over the same area with my paintbrush, it will cause the paper to kind of pill up or even worse, tear a hole in my paper and I don't want that to happen. Make that border. Notice I'm pulling my paintbrush. I'm not tickling with my paintbrush. I always want to apply the paint to the surface of the paper. I'm not trying to scrub the paint into the paper like I'm brushing my teeth. I'm applying the paint to the surface of the paper. And notice I'm just kind of hopping around my paper and finding those areas that I want to paint that dark, dark violet color but I don't wanna put my dark values right next to each other. I'm kind of keeping them separate. have a lot of these dark values filled in I'm gonna go a little bit lighter and I do that by adding a lot more water to my brush and watch what happens when I don't even dip my brush into my violet paint I just added a lot of water to it look how light that color is that is a light value. I get a really light value of that violet and I haven't even dipped it in my paint. It's just left over from the other areas that I painted and then a little bit of water. And it looks kind of dark now, but it'll dry even lighter. So I'm gonna get a lot of water on my brush and just a quick sweep on my violet paint here and I'm gonna do another area. A lot of water, just a quick sweep of violet. Ooh, that ended up a little bit darker. I could add a little bit more water, making sure that I'm not scrubbing my paper because if I'm scrubbing my paper, it's going to break down the fibers of the paper and it will end up pilling up and possibly getting a hole in it. So I wanna be really gentle with that paper, especially when it's really wet like this. The key to these light values is a lot of water and just a tiny hint of paint. Now that I have my really dark violet areas filled in and my really light violet areas filled in, now I'm going to go back and try to find that medium color. So I'm going to be using a little more water than I would for my dark values, but a little less water than I would for my light values. And this takes some experimentation. You have to kind of figure out what's it gonna take to get a value that's kind of in between the really dark, dark values and the really light, 
light values. And I would say just have fun with it and keep adding water as you go. Or if it dries, you can always add a layer on top of it to make it darker. And just enjoy the painting process as you create your monochromatic shapes painting. these darker spots, I can go back with a second layer, carefully on top, just gentle, and make some of these spots even darker. like to paint the background, you can. I'm going to leave mine white and I'm going to let it sit here and dry for a little bit. I had so much fun playing with paint and color and creating my overlapping monochromatic shapes painting. So mine is mostly dry, but when it's completely dry, if yours is starting to wrinkle up like mine, you can always press it under some heavy books for a day or so, and then when you take it out, it'll be nice and flat. If you want to, you can fill in the background with a different color or leave it white. So just remember, when you're creating, the possibilities are endless.